Europaparen Roman Polanski är aktuell med sin nya film Frantic. Nu porträtteras han av Nils Peter Sundgren i det första specialprogrammet som kommer att dyka upp då och då parallellt med den vanliga filmkrönikan. Den här intervjun är gjord i Stockholm och i programmet kommer också avsnitt och scener ur tidigare på danska filmer att visas. Sounded like a pig. Must be the heat. Det här är Roman Polanski i tv-studion i Stockholm den här veckan. Polanskis surrealistiska mardrömmar har gjort honom till en av vår tids mest uppmärksammade filmregissörer. Och lika berömd har Polanski blivit för sitt privatliv som kantas av katastrofer och katastroftillbud. Oh yes. Bangalore. Yeah. Yeah. Test. Yeah. Did you fly on that plane on the same plane that No, that you almost no? killed all the film critics in all Yeah, because I was on that plane. You were? Yeah. Yeah. An Airbus, which almost it was an Airbus, down. yeah, yeah. yeah. One engine blew up. Yeah. The first time I saw you was 25 years ago. You only spoke <laughs> French at the time. I remember you were all in plaster and yes. with crouches in, etc. The first film that reached the Western audience was really two men in a wardrobe. What uh, kind of a young man were you when this film was made? I don't know, it's just terrible for me to look at this. It looks like <laughs> sins of youth, you know? <laughs> and what kind of a young man were you when you were a film student? More or less like you see it here. Aggressive, hooligan? <clears throat> no, no, but I was, 
Uh, quite arrogant. Arrogant and cocky. Aggressive? No, no. Uh, this was rather a reflection of uh, hooliganism in Poland in general. Mm. It was flourishing in those times, really. <coughs> but uh, uh, I, r I, I always uh, had a very high opinion of myself in the film school, you see, which irritated a lot of my <laughs> colleagues, obviously. So you thought of yourself as superior to the others? I thought of myself as... Uh, 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 um, more talented than the others, I would put it this way, and probably I was, you know, because when you look at this, maybe doesn't look, uh, uh, it looks a little bit awkward, but somehow promising, you know, <laughs> and the fact that we're seeing it here is this, I never, ha I've, I've never um, uh, sinned with uh, um, ha uh, um, humility, you know, uh, unfortunately, that cost me a lot of trouble, a lot of problems. You got interested <coughs> in the cinema very early, didn't you? At an early age. Yes. Uh, there was uh, something that I uh, felt, uh, uh, I fell in love with in my childhood. It was cinema. Really. You, had a very, you had a very difficult childhood. I've read about it during the war. You were living in the ghetto. Well, you when you look at it from... Uh, we look at it, at it objectively, of, of course it was very difficult. Uh, a kid doesn't know better, so it was mm -hmm. what it was to me. And cinema was uh, some kind of escape in those times. During the, uh, during the war there was uh, a lot of movies to be seen, German movies mm -hmm. of course, and very cheap. E and even in the ghetto? Or no, in the ghetto no. When I, oh. I was in the ghetto, uh, uh, we, we saw through the wires the, f the, the uh, weekly news being screened on, in the in open on the marketplace where Germans would show uh, the Wochenschau, mm. you see. And there was a certain area, a certain angle where through the barbed wire you could see the screen. And we were watching those mm. things, the kids were watching, you know. Of course, it must have been an interesting sight from the other angle when you could see those mm. little monkeys behind the... Uh, wires, you know, <laughs> trying to get uh, 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 an, an idea of what movies were like. Uh, but later, when I escaped from the ghetto and I lived in Krakow with some family, I would go regular to the cinema. The cinema was dirt cheap and it was very unpatriotic to go to mm -hmm. the cinema, you see. And there was a slogan saying, Wszystkie świnie siedzą w kinie, which means all only pigs sit in, in, in the cinema. Den unge Polanski var alltså den polska filmens gossen ruda. Han var vanvördig och uppkäftig. Men han var inte alls intresserad av socialrealism utan gick sina egna vägar. I sin första långfilm som heter Kniven i vattnet så visar Polanski konflikten mellan de makthavande nyrika i den polska borgerligheten och den trotsiga, fattiga, västorienterade ungdomen. Uppgörelsen utspelas ombord på den här segerbåten. Ombord finns en ung flicka och om henne kivas en medelålders älskare och en ung student. Ja, vad är det? Vad är det? Vad är det? Skacz! Skacz! Nej, niech pan wyłowi wiosło. Nie umiem pływać. Niech się pan nie wygłupia. Nie umiem pływać. Mam się utopić? Niech pan skacze. Zostaw. Ale... Woda! Daj krokodyna! Czy pan pokład? Ja to robię z czuciem. Gdyby pan wpadł do wody, to by pan jednak popłynął. Niech pan spróbuje. Andrzej, krokodyl pani puszcza. 
Ja żartowałem. Na dole jest apteczka. Niech pan opatrzy rękę. Mam panu pomóc? Filmen kniven vattnet ogillades kraftigt av de polska myndigheterna. Och Polanski sökte sig nu till Västeuropa. Först till Paris där han bodde ett tag med sin första hustru som heter Barbara Lass. Men det var först i London som Polanski fick göra film igen. I wrote a script with Jean Brache called Repulsion for an English company uh, that needed uh, somehow to upgrade the, the, the image. They were mainly involved in sort of slightly um, uh, skin, horror, horror well. slightly porno, you yeah. know, and they, they made a, a, a great uh, um, success with, with a little cinema called Compton Cinema where they were showing uh, skin flake, what in those times was considered pornography, today would be, you know, shown on television, you know, at 12 o'clock noon. <laughs> so uh, they needed something, you know, to, 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 to go one step higher. And uh, we wrote a film uh, which, in our opinion, could uh, uh, be interesting for them. You know, it was a horror picture. And that was repulsion. And during, in the making of it, we tried to make it somehow more of a psychological thriller rather than a horror movie. Mm -hmm. So, good picture. <coughs> Last, <Is> it? <laughs> that was very well still today. Uh, hey. Tell me, how did you make the nerve act this way? I mean, she's, she's very convincing in this role. Did well, you have any uh, tricks or what? No, she was, she was just very well motivated. It was a great experience for me to work with her. She really was listening to what I had to say, you know, and, and, and uh, getting it out of me, you see, and I would get out of her this acting, you know, just she, uh, she was uh, totally concentrated and doing it so well that towards the end, after a few months, I realized that she was getting a bit neurotic, you know, which is inevitable.
No. <laughs> so she really sort of went into the road. She yeah, lived with she the road. Really did, yeah. yeah. Technically, it's very interesting too. How, how did you do these walls that are getting closer? And well, the perspective is changing. Yeah, too. we we build the set in such way, you see, like this, you know, like when you close a box and you put one under the other, you see? Mm -hmm. So we could uh, open it up. Understand? Oh, I see, yeah. see, like this. You know, the walls were like this, like that. So, you see, and like this. Like that, you know, like this. So it started like this, and then we would push this forward, and this one here, and so would become larger. Yeah, true. and also changing the lenses. You have uh, a wide angle, using wide angles, yeah, very wide yeah, but angle. both. That wasn't sufficient, you know. You really had to oh. alter the set. You know, all the using just wide angles, you can feel it. There, there is a, um, you know, optical mm -hmm. trick, and I didn't want to do that. This was your first really popular film with with a wider audience, I think. Right? Yes, that yeah. was the first. You know. the Knife in the Water in, in France, for example, was seen by uh, in Paris by mm -hmm. uh, fifteen thousand people. You know, yeah. which is uh, like what the, yeah. you know we do one day now. The uh, frantic open uh, first day it made I think twenty two thousand people. The first day, the whole career of Knife in the Water in France was sixteen thousand. So nobody have noticed that film. That's why I had such difficult time to, to, you know, to, to, to get any job. So you sort of changed from a sort of an experimental film director to a more popular film director. In a sense. Well, you know, you don't think you're an experimental no. film director. Let's, mm -hmm. you know, the ex except that I send my film to an experimental film festival. Mm -hmm. I still think I'm experimental film director. I still experiment, yeah. you know, uh, w with what I'm doing with my work. Except that people. Uh, um, somehow get used to certain form of expression that uh, it seems less strange to them. When you were in England, uh, Sam, you made one more film for Compton Films, didn't you? Yeah, Kill the, the Sack, yeah. yes. And we'll see, uh, well, something from the early part of that movie, which sort of settles the situation. Is anybody there? Yes, me. Dicky. I took the liberty of using the phone because Albert and me are having a little trouble. Trouble? Trouble or not, you have very strange manners. One doesn't usually burst in on people without warning, especially at this hour. One doesn't choose the time one gets into trouble. Actually, I don't know what prevents me calling the police. I told you, Albert and me are having some trouble. <laughs> Get it? Little fairy. if you want to stay healthy. Hello? And don't panic, no hysterics. Nobody's panicking! Hello? What? In an hour? Yes, yes, I'll keep the call in. First off, we gotta fetch somebody. So don't cry, I'm the sherry. Kiss the sicker suck. It'll be easy if all three of us push. Push. I suppose you don't mind if we put on some clothes first. Yes, I do mind. Get going. I'll show you the way. Wait, I'll get the Come on. Den buffliga förtryckaren och hans småväxta offer återkommer i olika gestalter i åtskilliga av Polanskis filmer. Och här ser vi Walter Matha som mycket hungrig pirat. Is that you? What? Hey? I thought I heard. It sounded like a pig. Must be the heat.
Now, now, Froggy. Be reasonable. Come on down, you little baboon. You want to hit me? There's a law of nature, by thunder. The strong always eat the weak. <laughs> Come on down, lad. Make an effort. Cannibal! Come, Piggy Wiggy. I'm not Piggy. I'm the frog. <coughs> Cannibalism is a mortal sin. It will bring you bad luck. You shall arrive in hellfire. What about confession? What do you think confession's for? Well, the part of the younger man mm. could have been played by yourself. Easily, well, this was originally written for uh -huh. Jack Nicholson and myself. Yeah, the idea was uh, to do a film together after Chinatown. We uh, thought of doing something together because I had that funny scene with uh, the nose cutting in Chinatown. And we wrote it with Gerard Brush for that uh, reason. But then later, so many things happened, so many complications. The film was not made, and then we tried to do it again, but with other actors. And eventually, 10 years later, that's the result. <laughs> but you sort of come back to these kind of, situa these kind of situations, don't you, in your pictures? Yeah, like, well, one uh. always comes uh, to the same type of... Uh, themes without really being aware of it, you know. Now when you show it to me, yes, I know, I like that type of character, the bully, you know, uh, funny. It's, it's the people that I, these are people I met in my, uh, my life. Many of these scenes sort of remind you of Samuel Beckett or something like that. Something well, like that. yes, I was greatly influenced by uh, his uh, writings and his theatre in my, in my youth. Uh, these were the first things, I was telling you about a, a hermetical, uh, Polish uh, system where no <coughs> wind from west was uh, uh, ever felt. And uh, the f among the first things that were um, brought to Poland was uh, uh, waiting for Godot. And I remember going to the theater in Warsaw mm -hmm. and seeing this type of theater, which I have not seen before. And I remember the impact it had on me. It must probably uh, 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 have impact strong enough to last until, you know. <laughs> Coming back to the 1960s, uh, you were very much interested in, in film styles and in genres, mm -hmm. and you made a parody of, of a vampire film, mm -hmm. the, va the Ray Vampire kill Killer. Killers again. And I thought we'll have a look at sort of the central sequence of that movie. I wonder what is the central oh, sequence? Well. <laughs>
Well, the girl in the picture was, was Sharon Tate, who be later became your wife and after a short time was murdered by the Manson gang. And you have described in your autobiography so that this was the life time with her was the happiest period of your life and you're, no woman has really meant anything for you that much afterwards. Is that true? That if it says so in my no. autobiography, then probably it is true. You could have changed your mind. <laughs> no, I have not changed my mind. No, I have not. No. <coughs> Very often, uh, the women in your pictures are, are victims. So they're passive victims, aren't they? They often are passive victims in life. More often than not, I would say. Simply because uh, <coughs> somehow evolution of our species placed them in a weak uh, position. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing in the films uh, that I uh, make, uh, it's probably the reflection of what I observe in life. So your, your conception of life is that life is a very brutal, paradoxical thing, really. Which, well, which life makes, is. doesn't make sense, really. Well, you know, I think many uh, people were trying to answer that question, and I don't think they were very successful, you know, but uh, it is a brutal thing, life. Life is brutal, life is competition, life is a, a, f a fight. Uh, if you think that everything on this globe or this uh, 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 planet thrives on other species, and there, there's no other source of uh, uh, nutrition than other organisms. Otherwise, organisms are eating organisms. Everything that you eat is a living thing. Did the murder of Sharon Tate change your view on life permanently, more or less? It certainly it did. I mean, how cannot uh, such a uh, trauma change? Uh, it was traumatic, a traumatic experience and, 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 and lasting experience. You know, It was in a period of my life when, as you said, I felt happy and uh, um, satisfied with uh, uh, with what my life was uh, about, you know, with direction it took, you know, with uh, people I had around me, and suddenly it all changed in one day, you know. Obviously. But today you you live in a sort of a balance, balanced life, or you're less unhappy than immediately after. Yes, I'm murder, less unhappy I because I think it somehow you know, f uh, relates to you know your happiness relates to to, to your your personal life and my personal life it's okay now you know it's better than it was for a long time and of course the, the you know the uh, the death of sharon uh, is further further away i mean it's been a long time ago mm. i was you know when it happened uh, some friend of mine a, a, a psychiatrist told me that it will be long long recovery he told me it will be at least four years Boy, it was, it was much, much longer, I can tell you that now. Another woman victim in your pictures is Mia Farrow in Rosemary's mm. Baby. Uh, she's a young lady who lives with her husband in, in a big apartment house. And there's very strange things happening. And we see towards the end where she's getting pregnant and she's going to have this baby. And uh, she's presented to the baby by a strange sect. to bed, you know you're not supposed to be up and around. Is the mother? Uh, Rosemary. Shut up. Rosemary. Shut up, you're in Dubrovnik. I don't hear you.
Well, God is dead, the old man says in the movie, uh, and Satan rules. <coughs> have those ever been your opinions as well? No, this, no. Uh, you know, I don't have any <coughs> kind of religious opinions in this matter, you know. Uh, my, uh, uh, I try to base myself rather on a more scientific approach to the philosophy. And this was uh, a book uh, which was... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, suggested to me by Paramount Pictures, which I have executed, and I try to uh, remove rather uh, than than add to it all those uh, uh, supernatural aspects. Now, some people have thought you were a Satanist at the time, where there were sort of rumors well, of strange things going on. Huh? Well, they think what they what they want to think. Yeah. You see, what what suits them. Mm. You know, it was convenient to think this way. You know, you're Jewish. Has that mm. meant very much for you? I mean, except for during the war, of course, for obvious Of course reasons. it meant, you know, it meant yeah. <coughs> that my uh, mother died in, in a gas chamber of uh, Auschwitz and my father spent four years in, in Mauthausen concentration camp. It also <coughs> meant that I, I lived in a ghetto and then in a country, you know, uh, uh, running away from the Germans. Other than that, I don't know. Uh, Today? <coughs> Today, what it means, it doesn't really mean much because I wasn't really brought up this way. I was rather brought up Catholic, but uh, you mean, I, I mean, that's quite, as uh, you know, r reminds me that uh, W.C. Field said once uh, uh, at, at, at the golf, uh, golf course uh, that apparently no Jews are allowed here, and somebody said, who, who are you talking about? That's Daryl Zano. He said, Daryl Zano, he's Catholic. He said, the worst kind. Uh, many of your films are about alienation in various forms, aren't they? Mm. I was thinking especially of one scene in a picture called The Tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll see the, well, part of the opening where you're presenting yourself to a landlady or uh, to trying to get a hold of a room. Quiet, Mirza. quiet now. Good afternoon, madame. Uh, yes, what is it? I'm sorry to bother you. I was told about an apartment. This is the right building, though, isn't it? Who told you? A friend of mine. Uh, well, a, a relation, actually. The door. I gather it's a small two-room apartment. Is that all I got to do? Some people think a concierge is a slave. Not me, not me, I assure you. Would it be more convenient if I came back later? Anyway, you have to speak with Monsieur Z. I can only show the apartment. I don't want to be a nuisance, but if it were at all possible, and if I might offer you some small compensation for your travel, which it's only reasonable. What a lovely little dog. You are your mirrors, aren't you? It's a, it's a nice name, Mirza. Sorry. Shelley Winters. Hmm. So is this the way you sort of <coughs> were received in Paris <coughs> originally? Or is this autobiographical not, in any sense? Not far from that. <laughs> not far from that. As you know, French are particularly xenophobic and, and uh, chauvinistic. Uh, but uh, again, here we, you deal w uh, w with an adaptation of a book. Which yeah, was, sure. You know. But there's some autobiographical of experience course, added to it. Of course, a lot of it. You know, yeah. you, when you're uh, uh, a foreigner in France and without uh, money and looking for a job, yeah. uh, you, you remember it for a long time. You know, that's, you always will be what the French call a metech. You know, mm -hmm. and I think I was a metech for a long time in France. Well, but you feel more at ease in Paris. I feel today. completely at ease today. Yeah, yeah because I'm. Not unknown, and no. I, I'm not without money, and uh, you know, and I you're don't live in somebody. this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't somebody. live in this type of apartment. <laughs> Very funny thing, when uh, uh, we were making this film, I decided to get an apartment in Paris, and uh, 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 
Pierre Guffroy, the art director of this film, with whom I since worked a lot, a lot, uh, uh, helped me to decorate this apartment. At the same time, we're building this apartment, you see, the apartment oh. of the tenant in the picture. Uh, almost all film is made in a studio, and all that building, it's constructed on stage, you know. It's a fantastic it, It's all, set, uh, yeah, it, it really looks very real. Mm -hmm. looks like a, a rinky-dinky French <laughs> place somewhere in the Republic of Bastille. <laughs> Och här har Polanskis unge hyresgäst klätt ut sig i kvinnokläder. För våningen och minnet av den kvinna som bodde där förut har helt tagit över hans identitet. Han identifierar sig helt och hållet med den unga kvinna som hoppat ut genom fönstret och tagit livet av sig. It's interesting when you see this sequence, uh, you see how you use the architecture, the furniture are bigger than life, aren't mm. they? To mm. make this impression of you being mm. small and helpless. Mm. Well, we build uh, um, a room in a uh, reverse perspective, you see, so uh, when you look at it from certain point, uh, it looks absolutely real and normal. Mm. But when you start walking into this room, you become smaller and smaller. Of course, camera has to be exactly in the center of your of your design. Mm. Uh, you know, it's not non it's not in optics as Ames room. You see, it's uh, otherwise the window was enormous. See, yeah. at the end of the room, uh, you know, and if you but uh, uh, when you place your camera uh, um, in in the correct place, the room looks absolutely uh, normal. You, you like the technical side of filmmaking very much. Oh, that's what I like the most, really. And I like to talk about it, you see. If instead of talking, <laughs> you know, about the sects and my believing in Satan, we were talking mm. about uh, how the things are made, I would be much more excited and less boring than I probably was on mm. your program, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you like to talk about acting? Ah, do you like to talk about <laughs> acting? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you like to talk about acting? Do yes, you like I to talk do. about yourself as an actor? I like to talk about how things are made, yeah. you know. I consider myself uh, um, an artisan of this uh, uh, seventh art, you see, uh, uh, a filmmaker. And I like talking about technical aspects. Mm. That's what I like the most when some people ask me, you know, what I think about the style, about the, uh, oh. si you know, the, the, the um, genre, about the, the um, 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 line that uh, is weaved through my uh, life, you mm. know, I just don't understand those times, <laughs> you know. You like the you say like Bunuel, I'm a simple man. I like to talk about simple things. Well, I don't know whether well, I'm simple. Said, oh, I just said. like he to was. talk about it. <laughs> he, was. he was. He was. <laughs> probably. Well, I really like to talk about nitty gritty, as they <laughs> say. You know. But we can talk about acting. No, what do you about want to acting. Know about acting? Yes. What do you think of yourself as an actor? We are so Well, I think I uh, uh, um, I think I had a lot of uh, 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 talent when I was a young man. I don't think I have used it because I went into, into, into directing, otherwise I had no opportunity to develop my, my uh, 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 capacities, you see. Uh, have I had more opportunity, I would probably end up as an actor, because I know that I had talent, because I started on stage when I was 12 or 13, and uh, um, 
uh, I played a lead in a, in a play and I could see the reaction of both critics and, and the audience. It was a huge success. It was a huge success because mm -hmm. I was good in it. So uh, it was something tangible, you know. Fortunately or unfortunately, uh, I was also very much interested by directing. I went to a film school mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I said somehow goodbye to it. Also, people don't trust you as an actor. You don't have... Men, uh, you don't have too much opportunity to show your abilities, you know, and I know how difficult it is for the others. So I had to give myself the part from time to time to show it, yeah. but it wasn't enough to uh, develop my, you know, w what was in, I in me. You is know. it difficult to direct oneself? To direct oneself? It's much more difficult to direct one uh, when you're acting than. Uh, no, sorry, it's much more difficult to act mm -hmm. when you're directing than direct when you're acting, you see. Because acting <coughs> means uh, concentrating or, on your scene, means forgetting about things around you, means um, also being completely relaxed, mm -hmm. you know, like this. And when you're directing, it's just the opposite, you know, you think about hundreds of things around you. And uh, everything but your line. You see, so when you direct and you stand in front of the camera, you, 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 you tell yourself, now I have to forget about the lighting, about my partner, mm -hmm. about the camera position, <coughs> and uh, about how many takes were done, and you just okay, start to concentrate, and then the clap comes, and it said, you know, scene uh, 79, take 14. And you think, 14 takes, oh my God. What? You know, <laughs> and you already lost your concentration. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and then you say, okay, uh, sorry, sorry, once again, okay, uh, 15. Bang, and you start going down, you see that this guy is not standing on his mark, you know? <laughs> and you're staying and, and you forget <laughs> yeah. what you, you understand. That's this this yeah. You just have to uh, tell yourself, now I'm no more a director, you see, for, uh, for the length of this scene, you see, of that take, you know? And you just concentrate, and the camera rolls, clap comes, and you just go in your track, in your groove, you see? And uh, what happens, happens, you know. It's difficult to forget that you are directing, you know. In the theatre, it's a similar thing, but it's, of course, easier because, you know, uh, um, um, you, uh, you know, once it's all together, you, 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 you get used to the play and not the 20th, 30th performance and night you eventually uh, become an actor and stop being a director. Coming back to acting, there are other people except yourself in your films. You direct other actors as well. Oh, what sure. Do you have, did, do you know, have a method of acting? <laughs> you have a method of acting. Or how do you of directing? Yes. No, I have no method. Uh, I realized very early in my life, in my, in my career, let's call it this way, huh? <laughs> that uh, every actor has, a, like every man that you meet in, in every day's life, has a different personality, different character, and you can't apply the same method to all of them. My first feature film that you uh, kindly uh, uh, showed, or rather the scene of which you showed, <laughs> Knife in the Water, had three actors only. Mm -hmm. uh, a man, a woman, and a, 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 and a boy. And I immediately realized that we're totally different people, you see. Uh, the man was an, uh, an accomplished theatrical actor, um, with whom you could talk and uh, in in quite technical terms, you could tell him just say it a little lower, and then scratch yourself here like this, you know, and uh, you know, and he would do exactly what you ask him because he, you know, he had a lot of uh, uh, experience, and because he was used to it. If you tried the same method with a boy, he was he would go completely lost, you know. He couldn't. He had to feel the thing. You just had to. Um, build it up as uh, uh, in Stanislavski's method, you know, mm. and make him feel the atmosphere, explain to him what is the intention, what is the scene about, and let him do it spontaneously. And of course, each time, each take, he would do something slightly different. The girl was not an actress, you see, it was her first movie. Uh, she was a cow. <laughs> and she was unable to do e either of those methods, you know, to follow either of those methods. So you just would have to tell her, you know, 
put the glass on this spot, you know, and then turn your head like this. And, she, and, and even though she wouldn't be able, she would forget it, she would put it here, you know. She, <laughs> and, you know, there was, you could not get any emotion out of her, you see. It was really a big job. And once, uh, you know, there is a scene when, when she's, she thinks she's alone of, on the boat when her husband has left and, she, and, and boy is supposedly, wa supposedly was drowned, but he wasn't. And he's, she's uh, 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 sitting there naked and hanging her, her, her swimsuit where the boy comes suddenly out, mm -hmm. out of the water. He swims quietly in the water and shows up and she should react to it. She was un unable to react. How you do know? you make her react? Well, actually, we shot a, a, a pistol right behind <laughs> her, <laughs> her back, you see, and that made her react. And, you know, uh, we were calling her names, you know, you <laughs> bitch, did, did it help? And she said, yes, it did, <laughs> you know, because it, it, we were trying to, 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 to just get her emotion, you know, to insult her, to, to push her around, but nothing would work with her. She was just a very bovine person, you know, to the very end. So I very early, uh, in, very early in my life, I learned that there is no particular method. You have to start working with a person and to see what he is like or what she is like, you know, and then... Uh, 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 use your best knowledge, you know, to feed her with ideas and to, to lead her or him, you know, and, and met, uh, uh, make them give you the best, their best. We'll now see you with a very good actor, Jack Nicholson, in Chinatown. Hold it there, kitty cat. Hold it. Hello, Claude. Where'd you get the midget? You're a very nosy fellow, kitty cat, huh? You know what happens to nosy fellows? Huh? No? Wanna guess? Huh? No? Okay. They lose their noses. <coughs> Next time you lose the whole thing. Cut it off and feed it to my goldfish. Understand? You often play unpleasant people, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to play unpleasant people. Huh? And what is it like to play with J uh, Jack Nicholson? We're talking about actors and good actors. And oh, he's one of the best. He's mm -hmm. an absolute uh, master of, of, of his art, really. And you could see it uh, recently in um, uh, Witches of Eastwick, yeah, for example. You know, someone, well, yeah. someone who can go so far in, in, in acting without, uh, without it being un unbearable is a real master. You know, he is he's one of the best. That's the only time you worked with him. Yeah. With Jack, yes, it's the only time I've worked yeah. with him. Yeah. You haven't. Well, you haven't been able to work for some time in America due to your, your, well, you have this mm -hmm. thing with the American mm -hmm. justice. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you hope to go back? Well, to be uh, able to go back. Let's put yes, it like. I, I, I hope to be able to go back. I want to clear this uh, business for the peace of my mind, but not to live there. I never wanted no. to live in America, and I like to work there because. Uh, um, it's 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 uh, where real, uh, the real industry was born. It was sort of mm -hmm. a mecca to uh, to the filmmakers for a long time. But uh, uh, other than working, uh, I never enjoyed uh, anything there. 
They really didn't like the West, living on the West Coast. Well, uh, you see, no, I was, I, 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 whenever I finish a film, uh, I would get on a plane and go back to Europe. You know, the living on the West Coast is like living in, in the suburb. A mm -hmm. very comfortable house. Um, everything can be gotten mm -hmm. by a simple telephone call. And that's it, nothing else. I mean, you drive to the studio and everything works beautifully in the studio, but mm -hmm. then you have to drive home and uh, invite few people, yeah. uh, you know, and or, or get invited to somebody's home. There's, n there's just, it's, it's hard to, to, to understand how it works there. It just, you can't, the, there are no sidewalks. In it Los was Angeles. called sunny Siberia. Some it is sunny Siberia. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you like to work. I remember when you were making this film, I, I met you at the Paramount mm -hmm. Studios and say, making films in the United States, in Hollywood is mm -hmm. like driving a Formula One car. It, the, the, yeah. That's what it is. It's a big because it was very much criticized by many uh, uh, critics, uh, young filmmakers, etc. Nouvelle Vague and whatever. Uh, that is a big machinery, but it's a big. Uh, this big machinery can be compared with with a Formula car. If you know how to drive it, mm -hmm. you go much faster than in a Volkswagen. And, but you think you'll be able to go back? You 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 settle this thing with the justice. Yes, but I don't think I would you're like still to accused, work there. But you're still accused of the, of the rape, and it's not. I wasn't yeah. accused of the rape. I was accused of a, of a, a sexual relationship with with uh, a, um, uh, a girl under age. Mm. Not the rape. Let's straighten. Ah. straighten yeah. that. There never was a such a. Uh, but accusation what was sexual intercourse. Yeah, it no, was. No. It was uh, uh, what's called in, in in legal terms uh, unlawful sexual intercourse. Mm. That's what it's called. But uh, making your latest picture, frantic. Uh, for an American company, is that a first step to be able to go back to the United no, States? No, it's not. It has nothing to do with it. Absolutely mm. nothing to do. It's just it was my choice to make a film mm. with an American company. I could have done the uh, uh, film with an American company years before. Mm. Uh, it has nothing to do with my my problem. Polanski's new film Frantic, it's a thriller. Harrison Ford plays an American doctor who just has come to Paris with his wife for to see the stone och hålla föredrag på en läkarkongress. Honey, I can't hear you. And when Harrison Ford's <laughs> doctor comes out, his wife has vanished. And the <laughs> film is about really his chase for it, looking for all over Paris. While nobody believes that, while everybody believes that he had a sort of quarrel, a fight with his wife, she goes away. And uh, when we come back into in film, uh, he is uh, trying to find her some way, but he's on a, on the roof of a house, and we have a look at that. He's showing the best bits. Of course. <laughs> <laughs>
this is one very good scene, isn't it? And Looks better on this <laughs> on the big screen. Like. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, when I watch it on television, sorry about that, mm. you know. But it I didn't look even. So good, you I know? didn't even tell it. But uh, it's sort of scene which makes you think of Hitchcock, and the film doesn't mm. make you think of Hitchcock mm -hmm. very much. And you have a strong, do you have a sort of strong relationship to it? No, I don't have a strong relationship, but if you do this, this genre, it's inevitable yeah. to be compared to him, you know, it's just, there are certain references in this film, even uh, ob ob obvious, you know, uh, there is a scene on the same roof with the girl when she slides and he holds her like this, yeah. with, you know, just was purposely done to somehow remind you of, uh, uh, west by North Northwest. Yeah. But it's also and the man who, the, who's he's the only one. Nobody believes him. It's like a Hitchcock thing yeah. too, the, the whole concept, the conception of it. We shall look at another scene too when he comes into the girl, he comes down the hatch to the girl and he has a scene with, with the policeman. But we'll see that later on. Well, then nobody will go to see the movie and <laughs> we have to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> but this entire film mm -hmm. uh, was made in a shot in the studio, or most of it. Most of it, no. Well, it's, uh, street scenes were yeah, shot sure. on, in Paris. Yeah. But do you prefer? To, do you prefer to work? I prefer to work in the studio because you're quiet. Nobody bothers you, and because you can make uh, create certain things, certain uh, certain sets better than they really are in nature. Do you think the think that uh, the cinema per se is an artifact? You're not a natural. Of course, it's an artifact. Uh, obviously, it's only you know our constant effort is to make it look like life, but it has nothing to do with life. You know, when you take a scene and you analyze it, you know, when you look at that scene with the, uh, with the suitcase, for example, you know, and you break it to, to, to pieces and you look at his expression when he's holding, you know, uh, suitcases, when he's putting it down, when he's hesitating, it has nothing to do with life, you know. These are only the, the points of reference, you know, it reminds you of life. We are constantly cheating you and leading you on and make you believe that it's life. And from year to year we have to do, uh, bring new details to be more uh, precise, sharper, uh, wider, more color, better sound. But it has nothing to do with life. These are m moving pictures. You see it's not live. You touch it, you see it's, it's a tube. Or in, in, in the theater, it's a screen, and you look back, you know, it's, and it's, that's what it is. You're photographing. Sometimes on television, you see pieces of life. The, those are called uh, uh, newsreels. And what really happens, what's interesting is what happens and not how it's shown. You show it in a movie, it's boring. Life is very, very boring on the screen, you know. That's a good ending. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>